Hi, Alexis. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so excited to meet you today. I'm excited, too. <laughs> so I saw you on Instagram, girl. You're out there giving us a little something, something. And you're mm -hmm. telling me you're, you're from Georgia. Are you born and raised there? No, I'm actually originally from New York. I've lived in Georgia going on two years now. So it's been a, a culture shock, to say the least. <laughs> um, but I definitely am appreciating life, um, like slowing down and just, you know, my husband and my baby. It's more of like family oriented. And so I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. I was about to ask, like, what's the difference? You know, obviously, New York is fast paced go 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 um mm -hmm. but it seems like you like the kind of slowing down not being so fast-paced in a big city right so if you would have told me that like 15 years ago i've been like you're crazy like <laughs> i could never um but you know i love new york like i actually just want to go visit my family up there and it's definitely like i do miss it i miss just going and hopping on a train or like walking to the bodega and just like just being in the atmosphere and most people hate it they're like oh my god it's so horrible <laughs> but like i don't know it's just like i love that like i've always been that person and i mean i love that and i still am that person but life has really had to slow me down lately um i got married i have a, a son and so i'm like I can't always be like the hustle and bustle anymore. Like sometimes you just have to learn to appreciate life. And my husband tells me that all the time. He's like, we are not in New York anymore. Like, <laughs> calm Get down. Get out of that so, mindset. <laughs> right, right. And so that's been something that I've been, you know, learning to do. Sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like there's just trees around. <laughs> I'm like, I can't find any good food. I'm like, somebody help me. But then, oh. you know, it's small things. <laughs> it's the small things, you know, that kind of keep me going. So I do like it down here. I mean, to be fair, it's only been two years and it seems like you were your yeah. whole life in New York. So that's a yeah. lot to get used to in just two years uh, we'll check back in with you when it's been like 20 years of you being in Georgia see how you like, yeah, I'll be like girl, you I'm last. fine I'm just feeling yes. <laughs> I love it now I can't even imagine myself at a bodega anymore yeah <laughs> no but um how old is your baby he will be three in a few weeks um oh. so he is a yeah fresh pandemic baby um the love of my life well my husband is the main love of my life but you know i love <laughs> the pieces like he could do no wrong even when he gets on my nerves and so um being yeah just being a mom has like changed my perspective of life so much like girl everything crazy. changes our bodies change our minds change like what you used to think that you enjoy you don't enjoy anymore it, it's just it's mm -hmm. crazy it's a lot to go through as a mom how old are you if you don't mind me asking i just turned 27 so i'm still oh, a fresh yes, yeah a baby <laughs> yes oh so, my yeah. god you have a whole life ahead of you girl yeah yeah oh, so wow now um for how long have you been married so i got married to my husband in 2021 we've been together since 2016 we met in college so i went to college in south carolina so i got a little bit of that southernness adjustment <laughs> yeah. but like i still had i was still able to go home and like live my best life uh, yeah of course so, so um we've been together for that long and it's been really great but marriage is definitely like a whole different world in itself too well i was gonna say so you had your baby in 2020 you get married in 2021 girl you moved to another city you are <laughs> you are on the go um that is a you know, lot like, of I'm podcast i'm gonna start podcasting and talk about my life like yes. no big deal <laughs> girl yes so tell us a little bit uh, and then i'll kind of come back to to you know pricking with more questions because i still have a lot to ask you but mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your podcast what's the name so, and where what's your mission so my podcast is cruises corner um on instagram is c-r-u-z-s 
corner c o r n e r underscore um and so i really started that like on my personal page i was like these are my maiden name is Della cruz so all my friends call me cruz like my you know my closest family and friends they call me cruz and i'm with these little like tidbits like cruz's corner like here's my take on life like i'm so annoyed with everyone like i don't <laughs> understand <laughs> why it's happening or i would do like stupid things like are cinnamon rolls like a dessert item or are they a breakfast item and like people would really respond and i was like oh you know it's just for fun um and then once i had my got pregnant and you know i went through a lot at that time and i was trying to figure out myself and it was just a lot going on in the world and so i kind of shut that down and really focused on like who i am as a person mm -hmm. and my friends would be like you know you should share like I would talk to them and be like you should share that like you should do your cruises corner stuff and I was like yeah I'll do a podcast or something this is when podcasts like weren't even that big of a deal compared to what they are now yeah, yeah. oh I, I shared a little bit of my journey of like becoming a mom and stuff on my personal page and I was like you know this is me like this is who I am these are the struggles I went through and here I am and they're like you need to do this and I was like yeah whatever been pushing it over pushing it off pushing it off um and I'm really big into my faith and so like just like having others in my faith surround me and like pushing me like you really need to do this like this is something that you need to do and I'm like I got to a point where I'm like all right I'm just gonna do it like I'm not gonna hold myself back anymore I'm not I'm at a place now where I'm not so much worried about everything else like I'm still figuring it out I'm still learning and I think that's the beauty of the journey is that you know in life with Instagram and TikTok and threads and all this stuff that we have it's like we want everything to be perfect and I've fallen into that and I've come to realize like I don't have it all together so you know I want to create a space where it's like I'm not an influencer I'm not you know I don't have it like my life together <laughs> like I'm not picture perfect and that's okay and I want people to really experience that for themselves because we put on a mask so much so that's really the mission of like what Cruises Corner is paying tribute to my Latina side like still keeping that alive my fierceness my New York like all that I'm gonna talk and to be who I want to be and it's just really my goal is just to encourage people to do that and whatever that is whether that is being a podcast making bread like I don't know what life is called each person too but you know we should do that because that's I feel like that's who we've made we're made to be and why would we hold that back from others experiencing that too yes oh my god girl hold on hold on hold on <laughs> Yes, everything that you just said. And you know what I love is that you are realizing that nothing has to be perfect. You're not mm -hmm. cookie cutter. We're not all cookie cutter. We come in all kinds of ways, girl. Some of us are a little bit crazier than others. And, you know, mm -hmm. some of us are more spontaneous. Our parenting styles are super different. Right. Um, but something that I've learned along the way is people are tired of the cookie cutter moms that have their children all put together and you know the fact that now they're getting exposed by their children that are grown up <laughs> now the right. fact that they're getting exposed of like you know pushing their kids to do these things and and you know using their kids as props that it's like it's not cool because you're ki you're not giving your kid a choice to be who they want to be but right. you wanting to focus on your journey as a mom, what you've been through, regardless mm -hmm. of what that looks like, props to you. Thank you. I'm very proud of you for that. Um, we need that. We need more honesty. We need more rawness out here in the world. Um, that's something that I even strive for with this podcast you know I used to say oh my god I can't record if I don't have my face on like you know my makeup yeah. and all that but girl mm -hmm. reality is I'm a I'm a mom I work yeah. I can't have my face on 24 <laughs> 7 yeah you know sometimes it, like right now I'm wearing my pajamas you would never know <laughs> yeah. you know and it is what it is but I'm embracing my markings and I'm like here I am take me or leave me so I love yeah. that now mm -hmm. You know, going through the changes that you've gone through and everything kind of going all at once, girl, kind of remind me of myself a little. Mm -hmm. I was, I had just turned 21. So a month after I turned 21, I got married. Mm -hmm. I got pregnant by the end of that year. 
and you know we celebrated our one year anniversary and then boom i had my child and then boom you know reality hits with like bills the real world you know marriage getting used to these men girl (laughs) i was a whole session that's a whole episode in itself (laughs) yes and i have to admit i went through postpartum depression yeah i went through and, and i feel like just now my son just turned 15 last month wow and i feel like for the first time i can breathe mm. it's almost like i've been holding in a breath for so long right because you're like yeah waiting for like the hits from mm-hmm. from every each qu- and I even feel like even now you know 16 years even though I've my husband and I um, met and we were friends for one year we dated for a year and then we got married um, mm-hmm. so in total it's 17 years or 18 ya ni me acuerdo but um, <laughs> but I feel like I'm just starting to like him my husband mm-hmm. And we're in, and, and, and that sounds so cruel. And he actually gets really upset when I say that. But I'm like, I mean that in the way that I finally get you. Right, yeah. I finally feel like we're in a good place. We have communication. He knows what I don't like. He, he knows what I love. He, like, we're finally in sync and we're finally able to take that time to ourselves as a yeah. couple and as individuals because our son is 15 now. Like, he's on his way out. <laughs> yeah so now it's like we face reality but to get here girl oh it's been hard yeah so for you did you struggle with you know have you struggled with depression or postpartum and all that good stuff yeah um so i struggled with postpartum actually for a long time and for me you know i think it was the pandemic everybody was struggling but I just think like I I had I had a really I had a birth experience that I didn't like you know and at that time that was really hard for me um you know like I internalized that I felt like my body was failing me I felt like I did all the right things in theory you know like I had a baby I had a baby and I wasn't married yet and so that was like a big thing for me too so it started early on um, and I was like, I felt shame because I was like, we weren't, we were engaged, we weren't married yet. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, we have this baby on the way. I'm like, I don't, this is a lie. The world is shutting down. I'm fear, I'm fearful. And so I internalized all that and I went through postpartum really bad. And I actually reached out to um, PSI, Postpartum Support International, and they host free um, like sessions, you know, like group sessions that you just get to talk and say, hey, it's been a rough week. I'm struggling. And they have like different groups for different communities, different specific areas. They have like a dad's group. They have a black mom's LGBTQ foster miscarriage or loss of child like it's awesome and it's all free and what okay so for the people that are listening to us you guys i'm gonna have that in the description box i'm gonna yes i'm gonna tell um alexis to share that with us i definitely will i didn't even know that existed girl yeah i think i don't remember i either i found i think i found it i was like really looking for postpartum help and it just came up and um yeah so i struggled i struggled for like the first two years of my son's life um you know i was going i did that i went to individual therapy on and off and now you know i even did even on medication like any like i had to realize that anything that i did was going to benefit was going to impact the long term Right. So like all these things that I'm feeling, everything. So it's like I'm impacting my relationship with my husband. I'm impacting my relationship with my friends. I'm impacting my relationship with myself, with my son. And so I had to get myself to a point where I was like, I'm I want to better myself. Right. I want to better the, the legacy that we're leaving and the future generations that are to come out of this. And it's like if I don't heal where I'm at and it's still a journey like it's not like all right I'm healed I'm good it's fine like there are still moments where I feel that rage and I feel frustrated but now I have the tools and I could communicate and I could say 
okay, like I can go, I need, I need time to myself or I, I now I know this helps me calm down or I take a breath and I'm like, he's only two, you know, like <laughs> it's okay. Yes. And I do, you know, like, and sometimes I have to get on his level and I have to engage him and like it changes, but I didn't have that before. I didn't have the voice or even the, I wasn't even in the place to think about and to recognize where I was at. Like it was just, you feel a so guilt. Much. You feel a guilt yeah. for feeling frustrated, especially mm-hmm. That's what I mean by, you know, the cookie cutter blogger moms that make it Mm -hmm. seem like everything's so easy. Girl, they be out here with like 10 kids and making it look like they wake up and it's just like that. And and it's like, no. How can you? My thing is like, how can you even afford diapers? Like, (laughs) thank you. I'm confused. Like, how is that happening? You know, like, I just, yeah, I don't know. know what? you know what though i'm a strong believer that everything that we saw see on social media is not real because who of us has the mindset or the time to turn on our camera 24 7 like i i can't even Mm. capture when i go to the beach girl (laughs) (laughs) like it's such a journey to me and then once i'm leaving i'm like oh shoot i didn't take no pictures i didn't record like Mm -hmm. i'm the worst type of like person you can follow on social media because i forget everything (laughs) um but you know so these moms make it seem that way so when you're looking at that on social media and mm-hmm. you know when there i saw a mom the other day which props to her you know i'm not i'm not downing anybody because at the end of the day we don't know what they go through but um i, I saw this mom and she has like the on tiktok she has like this mm-hmm. old stove and she has her kids like all over her sometimes even on her hip and she's like making butter and cheese out of scratch oh, yeah. have you seen, seen her too. yeah i'm like girl how I could barely make spaghetti like what (laughs) and with kids like running around and stuff and she makes it seem like so effortless and I'm like girl what medication are you on like (laughs) like, what are you doing do you have like nannies in the background like what is going on um and you know props to them but unfortunately that's not for, that's not a realistic thing for all of us so when we're yeah. sitting there frustrated when our kid is throwing a tantrum when our kid is not feeling well when they they just don't know how to communicate their feelings and you're frustrated and you're like oh my god like i want to go drop him off at the fire station <laughs> i still tell like my 15 year old that but your teenage son hasn't like taken out the garbage and picked up his underwear in three days. You're like, come on, seriously? Yes, girl. I still tell my son, I just told him like the other day, I'm like, I'm gonna go drop you off at the fire station. He goes, mom, <laughs> too old for that. That was, I expired, that expired a long time ago. I was like, you know what? Don't test me, don't test me. Um, but no, but it, I mean, it's, it's just so raw. So on Cruz's Corner, I'm very interested. Um, are you going to address all those mommy things? Yeah, over time, I'm like I said, I'm like dragging my feet with it. I'm be honest with you. Um, but I do have some ideas. And I'm, I'm starting to put more momentum into it. And that's another thing, too. Like I am have my toddler at home. Some, well, he's at daycare now. But like yeah. when he's home with me, he's like running around and like he's like, oh, what's this? And like all in my face. And so it's just really about me getting into my own discipline and saying, OK, I'm going to yes. set time aside for this and um, really addressing that more. Because I think, you know, we postpartum depression and baby blues and things that you experience as a mother or or in general as a woman like are so taboo to us in society like if i i went to all these prenatal appointments and they told me all this other stuff but i wish somebody would have sat me down and like educated me like your body's gonna your body's not gonna snap back in six weeks or eight weeks it's gonna take at least a year now they're saying the postpartum period is like up to six years when your child is six years old now like you know when there's things like epigenetics where like how you feel and literally the things that you feel as a pregnancy impact oh, and yes. alter the DNA in your child like yes oh my yeah. god somebody would have told me that i'm over here like i really should i really want mcdonald's but should i really eat mcdonald's <laughs> like i'm crying <laughs> over like random stuff and i'm like i you know it's just like, i wish i wish we as we were more educated on yes. you know that and everybody's 
experience is different. Everybody, you know, I know oh, yes. every pregnancy, <laughs> even even like one mom having four kids doesn't mean you're going to have the same pregnancy with all four. No, you're going to have different pregnancies. Right. And so it's just like, I just wish we were more educated on that. And I wish there was more of a. Like, where's the village at? You know, the vill- everyone talks about the village. Girl, the village, that, the village. W- that went away. That's gone. <laughs> That's right. gone. It's gone. I was thinking the other day, and I was actually having this discussion with my mom because, you know, I'm like, my husband and I are always talking about our childhood, right? And we were mm-hmm. always at my grandma's house, girl. Like, on yep. the weekends, my grandma's always. house you know a summer vacation so uh my grandma's house you know and she yep. see all of my cousins and she would cook yep. for us like we had breakfast lunch and dinner like i literally and i've said this so many times my listeners already know what i'm about to say i used to think my grandma lived in the kitchen girl i didn't even know my grandma had a bedroom because she was always in the uh-huh. kitchen and <laughs> bless her heart but you know she cooked into her like 80s until she just couldn't anymore but um and my son doesn't have that and I told my mom I'm like hey you know like we used to go to my grandma Saturday and Sunday why can't I go to your house Saturday and Sunday and you cook for us yeah you know you're on your own schedule you're not even thinking about us and then you (laughs) know we didn't have I didn't have like a thousand sisters and you know I have my brothers but they're in their own thing and you know most of them are out of state and stuff and so I'm like you know where's the community like where is it my cousins are all over the world too and so I'm like this sucks yeah yeah you know what's crazy when I was visiting my family in New York recently you know my my son met a lot of like his cousins like my cousins who had kids like he met their cousin his cousins and I felt so stress-free because I feel like I didn't have to like entertain him and do all stuff like the kids just played and I got to talk and then somebody would do something be like okay stop and then you know like it was just like that and I was like that's why I remember like my grandmother's like my mom's mom like every weekend I was at her house she lived with us at one point I would spend the summer every fourth of July every Easter and every Thanksgiving with my dad's family and we would it would be like It's like 15 of us in the house, like cramped around this table. And it was so much dysfunction. But like, that's what we like. That was what we had. And like, I think about that and I'm like, you know, we're trying to obviously I live in a different state now. You know, it's hard. Everybody's older, but it's like trying to do that still because I'm like, that was so much like I was like, it's normal for kids to fight. Like, I thought that was normal. Like, we fought all the time with my with my cousins. Like, we still talk yes, about it. To this girl. Day. Like, they would, we like, would tease each other. We would play pranks time. on each other. It was we did, like little dance shows and yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what? I'm still I'm trying glad. to get I'm trying to get into my mom's garage because she has videos. Oh my gosh, no. I'm glad social media was not around them because we would have posted all of them, <laughs> our little talent shows and everything. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it was just a mess. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Yes. And see, and I and I that that's something that oh my God, girl, I carried so much guilt when my son was younger. Because I was like, what he, he's gonna feel lonely especially because he's an only kid he's gonna yeah. feel lonely and he's gonna do this and so i would try to go to like you know um to the we have like a public library really nearby and i would go and i would take him to like singing time and i signed him up for like the ymca and little classes yeah. and i would put him in sports and stuff like that to try to make friends and he's a very social kid he's just like me mm-hmm. he can make a conversation out of thin air and but I was like, what's going to happen? Like, what is he? And then I couldn't live. I couldn't live with my kid going to normal school. So I had to put him in homeschooling. But I didn't want to keep him home all the time. Because yeah. I knew that, you know, I can't keep my kid in a bubble. He needs to be exposed to the world as well. So I found this yeah. really good program where I still took him three days out of the week. You know, and we made really good friendships there through church, you know, the congregation. We met other little kids that were there. And it was that's how I build like my little community and our little per call it our little village. Yeah. Um, and now that he's older, I've realized that, girl, I was killing myself for nothing because now he goes, Mom, 
I just remember you just being there. Hmm. I don't remember what you didn't buy me. I don't remember what you did buy me. I don't remember none of that. I just remember you being there. Yeah. And so I feel like we forget sometimes as parents that our kids don't care how much money we earn, don't care what toy they have. At the end of the day, as long as they have a home to come to, that's what yeah. matters. Yeah, and that's the most important thing, I think, to give. And you're like way ahead of me when it comes to motherhood. So it's like, I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing for your son to recognize and say, mom, you know, I love that you did that for like that was his way of showing his love and his affection. And that's so beautiful. Yes. And it's it's really it's really awesome because I think so many, especially like as women, like we're I mean, I know growing up with my in my like as a Latina and stuff like it's like you have to do all this stuff. You got to cook, you got to clean, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like I just want to take a nap. Yes. <laughs> you know? yes. I just want to sit on the couch, you know, but just like your son is like, I it didn't matter if the house was a mess. It didn't matter all these things. And, you know, he was able to appreciate that you did that for him. And that's amazing because it's a struggle. It is a struggle to do that. But you still did that even in your own way without even knowing it, without even knowing it. And it helped me finally, I think, heal. Mm -hmm. internally because so in 2018 I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and mm -hmm. my life fell apart girl like I lost my career I I lost so many things and I had like a total mental breakdown and so my therapist was like what bothers you like what's the hardest part for you and I'm like mm -hmm. did I failed my kid I've always wanted to get him a backyard. I've always wanted to get him like, you know, he has his own room and everything. We have a really small, tiny house that works for us. But I would love mm -hmm. for him to have more space for his friends to come over. I would love to have a pool. I would love to have this. And I just started naming like, you know, my dreams. Yeah. She goes, I would love for you to talk to your son and tell him how you feel. And I want to know how what he responds. And so, mm -hmm. girl, I'm not kidding you. Me and my son had a heart to heart. We were crying together on the floor. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and, and I just said, I'm so sorry. I feel like I failed you as a mom. I failed you. I wasn't able to give you a backyard. I can't give you a playroom, you know? Mm -hmm. And he sat there and he said, mom, I'd rather have you and dad than all that. Mm. And that, oh, girl, that was like, it was like a relief. And then he, he, he's so cute. He even said afterwards, he was like, mom, we can still do it. There's no timeline, mom. Mm. And once I work, I'll help you guys. And I was like, it's not your responsibility, my love. Once you once you grow up and you work and you're going to work for yourself, mm -hmm. but just know that all the sacrifices that we made and all the luxuries that we don't have is because your dad and I always put you first. Mm. I would hate going to work, girl, and having him to leave, leave him at my parents' house. I hated it. Yeah. I hated it with all my heart. And I almost feel like the multiple sclerosis was like a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. because it took me away from what I hated which was working you know um, I have challenges every day but I've also realized that my challenges are lessons for my son mm. that even though some days mom can't get up because her body hurts it teaches him compassion and teaches him empathy yeah. you know um he's very mindful of others he's very respectful and so the little things that we focus on sometimes that our kids might not have is mm -hmm. truly not what matters um, and it's all because of what we see you know what's betrayed what's put out there in society whether it's through social media whether it's through movies whether it's shows mm -hmm. whatever it is they're making us focus on the wrong thing yeah you know? Yeah, that's so I think that's so powerful and so encouraging because, you know, you've turned and even like when you were talking to your therapist, like you were being 
you're like, this is my reality. This is where I'm at. Like, this is where I, what I'm feeling. And, you know, just for her, obviously you guys have a great relationship because she was like, girl, I'm about to flip your world upside down. Yes, <laughs> yes, you know? she did. But yeah, so just like having that. Do. I love her. With your, yeah, with your son and just like sitting and talking with him and like that is what it's about. And, you know, like when I was, you know, even even through these early stages now, like that's why I aspire to be at. Like I aspire to and now you're making me emotional. <laughs> but like I aspire to be that mom. Like I aspire to be that mom that I know I can't give my son everything and maybe I don't want to give him all these things, but I want to be able to say, I, you know, I'm here for you. Like whatever you choose in life, whatever you want to do, like, I just want to support you. And I just want to love you through that. And I just want to make sure that you understand that you are precious and that nobody can take anything from you. Like, you know, you have your voice, you have your character, you have these things. Nobody can take that from you. And, you know, I love my parents, but I've, as an adult, I've had to realize like a lot of the thing, pain that have been caused, you know, from childhood things is because my parents were making sacrifices for me. Yes. You know, like my grandparents were immigrants. My parents came, they were like, we just floating, you know? Yes. And now I'm at a place where like, I have a master's degree. Like I'm doing, I've, I have a bachelor's degree. Like I have a family, like I'm doing things that like all the statistics that I shouldn't be doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm just really proud of where I'm at, but if it's had to humble me in the, in the place of, you know, like I had to forgive, you know, them for those things because they didn't know better. Um, and that's what pushes me to be a better mom because I, I know now, like, I'm in a different place than they are, and I I appreciate everything they have done for me, oh, everything my grandparents have done for me. But it's like, I want to get to that point where I'm I'm nourishing my relationship with my son, with my husband, with other people around me, where I'm, I'm helping them grow, too. You know, yes. like, and it's like, I'm pushing you. Like, if my son runs for president, praise God. <laughs> like, <laughs> if he becomes an NFL player, NBL player, amen. Like, you know, it's awesome. But it's like, if he wants to be an artist, cool. Like, yeah. if he wants to be a fan, they have great benefits. <laughs> like, yes. you know, I, yes. I want to just encourage him, like, and no matter whatever he, whatever he does. And I think that's so awesome that you're able to do that. And even in your own pain, like, just sitting there and, and sharing with him and being vulnerable with him. You know, I feel like a lot of times, like, you know, you can't be vulnerable with your kids. You have to just put on, like, your face and all that stuff. Even for your kids, like, don't argue in front of them and don't do it. But it's like, you're still a human. Like, you still have emotion. Not you know? only that, but they know. Kids are yeah. so intuitive. And I mean, of course, I don't tell him everything. But I have a really good relationship with him. And I've always had it. And I remember one time... Um, we were we were in a in a meeting with his teacher and i don't mm -hmm. recall everything but for some reason i don't know if it was like a field trip or something that we couldn't attend and he told the teacher he said um no sorry my mommy has to pay the rent mm. and so she kind of pulled me aside and she was like you know i i would just advise you know don't don't put like don't let the kid know that you guys are struggling financially you know this shouldn't be on him and you know i thanked her i thought about it i discussed it with my husband and we were like we're not putting it on him though but reality is that there's bills that we have to pay and yeah. so when he was in fifth grade one of the moms came up to me and she goes did you know our kids are planning something and i was like what are they planning it's like fifth grade girl they were planning <laughs> on how they were going to move out together and so <laughs> one of the one of the friends was a girl and her, i guess her grandpa has like different properties so she mm -hmm. was telling the boys like oh yeah you know my grandpa could rent us his house he has like four bedrooms and like i could have one and you guys can have like one each and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and my son started telling them well who's gonna how are we gonna pay the the electricity the gas the water mm -hmm. the trash and they were like what and my son's yeah. like, you know, that's not free, right? Like, you have to pay things. <laughs> yeah. And so she, so the, so the mom was like, your son like schooled him and took them out of their dream. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's oh my so god! Funny. And now he's even like the one to be like very mindful. He's very mindful with his money, you know. And he's like, okay, if I if I need to buy something, what can I give up to buy this? Like. 
it's reality we can't yeah. keep, we can't keep our kids in a bubble we can't teach them that whatever they want they're gonna get no you have to work for it um right. in whatever way that you decide but i feel like parenting needs to be somewhat transparent um, yeah for sure not scaring them not nothing but educating them yeah. um and when you what you said with your son i think it's also very important for you to realize that what you're doing in forgiving your parents and realizing that you know they had their own struggles it was a different time um mm -hmm. now we're more aware of things since many of us are starting to speak up about it mm -hmm. our parents at least mine girl I'll, I'll talk about mine i know my parents will never sit there and say sorry Mm. my parents will never sit there and say you know they, it's hard for them to admit you know that maybe they've made mistakes yeah we all do that's what makes right. us human that's yeah. you know we all mess up and like you said it's a constant daily work working mm -hmm. on yourself because yeah. you'll be learning so much stuff in your life huh i could have done that different so you start doing it different Mm -hmm. I could have, you know, done this. We're always learning. But to be able to sit with our kids and say sorry that I haven't been perfect. Yeah. Um, I remember my son telling me, you know, this really hurt me. How you were yelling at me really hurt me. And, I w and I'm able to sit down with him and say, okay, this is why I got frustrated. Like, it wasn't you. It's just that mm -hmm. this was going on at that time. And mm -hmm. I took it out on you. It was not right. And I yeah. apologize for that. And I'm not telling you to get over it because that's on your own terms. Those are your feelings. But I respect your feelings. And I just right. hope that you could see where I was coming from. Yeah. My mom would never grow. <laughs> My mom would <laughs> never. <laughs> like, oh, you know, they start getting offended right away. Like, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, learning to do that, I think, is very important. Yeah, for sure. And it's it is hard, especially like if, you know, like putting yourself out there and then it's like not, it not being reciprocated, not hearing the sorry that you want to hear or not hearing those words of affirmation or whatever it is like that you were looking to hear when you and it's just like, all right, I'm just going to take it what it is and that's something my therapist had to walk me through and is still walking me through is like if life does not expect you, things to it the happen the way that you think they're gonna happen yes like are you still gonna be okay and i was like no i'm not <laughs> like i'm not gonna be okay you know because i was like no like that's still this is no it has to be this way and then you know through my journey over the past like i would say four years i've really realized like sometimes life what you want of it or even the things that you're looking for you don't even need yes. you know it's like sometimes it just takes that strength that you've built in yourself to know that like i know you can't reciprocate this for me and i know that you can't give me what i want or what i'm asking for mm -hmm. but it's okay like i have the strength in myself and i have you know I've, I found my village, like you were talking about earlier. Like, I found the people who are going to support me. I found the people who are going to uplift me. I found people who are going to love me regardless and who are going to fill in that gap. And so I'm going to move forward that way. And that's kind of where I've been at life and kind of pushing more towards that. And like I said, it's not every day, but it's definitely something I've, you know, looked for more and, and that confidence within myself to say, I don't need... I don't need validation from others. I don't need those things from other people. Like I can build that within myself. I could build that within my nuclear family. Like, yes. you know, and, um, it's just been really awesome. It, but I will say it's a very lo lonely journey. And you have, you really have to really accept that um, because you know, people are not going to understand. Someone could love you to death, but like never understand. And I think that's the most heartbreaking thing is like being not understood and feeling like you're doing it by yourself, you know, and Girl, the people I've had people in my family that I thought, you know, because they're family, they're blood, they're always going to be there. We've been through thick and thin. We've seen each other grow up and you're rooting yeah. for them, but they don't understand what you're doing. Um, and I have girl it's been so painful 
Mm-hmm. Oh God, it's painful. It's mm-hmm. lonely. Yep. It's it's that's the side that nobody speaks on because it's so pretty yeah. to be like oh affirmations and self love mm-hmm. and all this stuff. I'm healed. Yeah. I'm my suffer era. Like, yeah. but no, it's an everyday thing because you have to set boundaries. You have yep. to start setting priorities straight. Um, even friendships. I've lost friendships because I'm like, you know what? At this moment, I'm focusing. Girl. So let me tell you, I started this podcast in 2021, I believe. Um, and at first I started with one host because I was like, I can't do it by myself. I'm so insecure, right? And mm-hmm. then you know she kind of went her way i kind of went my way and then i got another host and then that went to hell and i was like oh shoot like what do i do a year i mean those two years that i was you know in between and going back and forth i stopped i stopped doing it girl like i was just like i don't have it in me like i'm done instagram kept shutting down my podcast pages this is like the third one that i make um and i was like i'm done I'm just done. God is trying to tell me this is not for me. And I went into 2023 and I was like, no, damn it. Like, I could do this. Like, yeah. wake up. Like, what are you doing? You know, like what you lost the whole purpose of what you were doing. Mm. And, you know, I again, my therapist, my therapist is probably going to kick me out one of these days. But, you know, I'm like, <laughs> what do I do? Eva? like, help me. And she was just like, Maribel, you have all the answers you just have them you just do it and I just started doing it and consistency discipline Mm -hmm. and it's gotten me to a really good place now where I'm like enjoying it girl like having these conversations I live Mm -hmm. for this you guys like inject me with energy and I'm like good for like the week even if I have just like one interview a week I'm like good I'm like, this is amazing you know being able to understand other people's journeys you know sometimes you think you have a you have a bad and then you hear somebody else's story and you're like oh my god I'm not gonna mm-hmm. complain and yeah. being grateful for what you do have yeah for sure and that's like even the move down here that's what it has changed me the most like you know, I'm just so grateful. Like, I went through a season where I had nothing. Like, God was like, you think you got it? Like, I'm going to strip it all away from you. Like, I had no car. I had no job. I had nothing. Okay. And um, I really had to lean on my faith. And somehow, some way, I was able to put groceries. Like, people, like, it was just, I didn't tell anybody. Like, I told maybe, like, my husband at the time. I told him. I told um, my dad and, like, a couple other people. And I was like, look, make this work some way, somehow. And um, my dad ended up helping me a little bit, you know, to get me on my feet. And yeah. But I was like, I ain't got no money for groceries. And it's just like people were just like providing meals for me and giving me leftover stuff. And like it was lasting me. And I was like, OK, like, all right, God, I'm like, because I was a girl. I was like, I was going to Starbucks all the time. I was buying whatever I want to do. All these things. I went from that to like nothing yeah. in a month. Yeah. And I was like whoa like this was a huge reality check for me and you know just going through that time and like seeing like there are people you know who literally like have nothing like I was able that I was able to you know bounce back from that and get myself into a better position and where I'm at now and there's people like who are homeless you know and they don't have a job and don't have any resources whatsoever nothing There's kids in foster care who are struggling, like, with so much, and they're running away, and, you know, kids getting locked up for other things, and, like, I worked in a juvenile facility for a little bit, and, you know, just seeing the things, like, the kids are like, I'm just gonna get locked up again, because it's better than going home, and, you know, it's just, like... That, and see, when you think, when you start having that mommy guilt, girl, mm -hmm. remember what matters, yeah. You've provided a safe home for your son. You've provided him a mom and a dad. Which mm-hmm. that's like insane nowadays. Yeah. It's not really seen and marriages are not easy. 
It's something um, that, you know, we might see you guys holding hands, kissing, you know. When people see me and my husband, they're like, oh, my God, you guys are, like, so... I'm like, oh, you have no idea. We got some argument on the yes, way here. Yes, <laughs> But we don't show that because that's between me and him. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, and, and that's another tip, you guys. For those of you that are listening that are married, don't ever share your problems, your marriage problems, or your ics about your husband or whatever with any Anybody. your relationship you is between you and him yeah um yeah. you can talk about your personal experience but you know i oh i like oh, when they start talking about their husbands or they start posting like you know this is mm-hmm. you know yeah. um and i'm like what are you doing no like it's already hard enough and you're making it harder by inviting everybody into your drama your business yeah and then when you guys get back together or when you guys yeah, are on stupid. a good day right everybody's like i thought he just did this to you like what are you talking about <laughs> and i'm like girl but yeah that's something i've i someone told me a long time ago and they were like don't share your problems no. and uh, that was something like with my husband like i mean not say that we're perfect i got i say yeah we oh, do no, struggle girl. but and i tell like my like because my friends be like oh my gosh how do you guys do it i'm like girl i don't know how we do it it just works out <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, Look, but we, I, we we somehow we work it out okay <laughs> <laughs> somehow some way yeah. and so but i've i've stood to that like i'm not gonna sit here and bash my husband first of all oh. when i'm i'm first of all i may just be in my emotions and i may be emotional sometimes i need a minute to take a step back but also recognize like i've chosen him like he chose me of course because yes. i'm surprised but like you know, like I choose to be a, a partner with him and share my life with him. And he comes from a different background. He has a different life experience. He's a male, like he's operated and wired differently than me. And I've come to accept that and just accept that we're gonna disagree. And sometimes it's on like stupid stuff. And sometimes oh, it's girl, on it's stuff- Oh it's the most I- dumb thing ever. <laughs> it's the dumbest little things. Like, oh my God, how many times have I told you to pick up your socks? <laughs> right. Right. Or it's like I don't or me, I'm like, I don't want the cups there. I want the cups over yeah. here. Like just put a coaster. Thing. Put a coaster. <laughs> oh my god, do you not see all the rings you've already made? Damn it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so just like like just recognizing like life is so short and life is so precious. And my husband, like, God forbid, but like I I would be lost without him a little bit, just a little bit. I would bounce back with like just a little bit. And like, that's my best friend. Like, yes. that's my, like, As the person be, I'm girl. like, yes. Yeah. Like, if I'm having a bad day, he's the first person I call. And then I call my daddy next. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, once I got it together a little bit. So it's just like, you know, I'm like, I, you know, like I just learned to appreciate him. And instead of looking at it as like differences, especially like with parenting and like, you know, raising a, a young a little brown boy and like all this stuff. I'm just like, okay. At the end of the day, like he's contributing to this just as much as I am. Yes. It's just maybe in a different way. It may be in a way I might not like sometimes, but at the end of the day, like I'm gonna still respect him enough to not go bring things outside of our marriage. And I, and we have great communication. Like I will sit him down and be like, this is a problem for me. Like we need to talk about it. Yes. And if we can talk about it right then, then we will wait. You know, or we were like, you know, we'll do that. But like, we always communicate everything. And I, I we've t- said that before when we started dating. I was like, I'm not in here to play games. Like, we were very specific about what we wanted, and we were very specific about communicating the good, the bad, the ugly, all in between. Cause I, I was do like, have I'm not to gonna admit, though, girl, and, and tell me if I'm wrong. I don't. God, I hope my husband's not listening. <laughs> but God, my husband bottles everything. And then mm-hmm. he'll tell me like a year later, like this really bothered me. And I'm like, when did I do that? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, didn't we say we were going to communicate? And he's like, well, yeah. didn't bother me then, but you did it again. And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. you need to talk to me about it at that moment because yeah. you know, I am going to do it again. And then yeah. we're going to be in this scuffing and then, you know, just talk to me. <laughs> but it's so hard for guys to like lay out their feelings and tell you and sure. sometimes it takes a little bit of kind of mind reading and understanding mm-hmm. who they are and respecting yeah. who they are yeah as a best that actually is something like we're still not nav- i mean we're still navigating through that yes. and i think part of that is a lot of the stigma of like men shouldn't share their feelings and they shouldn't you know 
be emotional and they shouldn't show vulnerability like but meanwhile the statistics of males committing suicide is rising like crazy and so it's like I tell my husband all the time like and that goes back to like he's just wired differently you know and I told him and like I could I could it's to the point where like I could read it in his voice like or his body language like I could tell and it's like he may not tell me right then I'm like okay well I'm here and so nine out of ten times it's something I did so yeah. <laughs> I, I probably know <laughs> what it is anyway but you know like but I feel like, at and, least I, at least I feel like my husband treats me like a ticking time bomb like, sometimes yes. he doesn't tell me anything at that moment because he knows I'm going to explode. Right. So I'm going to be like, I'm coming back and I'm like, well, what about this, 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 this? And he's like, well, we're going to have this conversation now. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I think it's that. And um, recently, like, I've just al- been allowing my husband, like, allowing myself to be, like, allowing a safe place for my husband to saying, hey, like, what is wrong? And, you know, like, just listening and not like in my mind I could probably say like six things but I've just not and I also I'm like modeling that for my son too like you know I want to model that it's okay to talk to us it's okay for him to talk to his dad or to me or you know just see what a healthy relationship looks like exactly that's what I was going to say the dynamic of a relationship he's seeing that oh and even if you guys argue girl because we all argue we're not perfect And Mm -hmm. girl, I'm telling you this 17 years in. I argue I argue with the people when I'm getting road rage in the street. Yes. Like I'm arguing with him, so I'm definitely gonna argue with him. Or the lady in the grocery store that I just I was like, woman, like come on. Yes. But yeah. And no know, knowing that there's a time and place for that. You know, mm-hmm. me and my husband sometimes we'll have argument you know disagreement not arguments disagreements in front of my son like where it's like no you're wrong that's no that's not how it is or no that's not how it was whatever but when we're actually having like strong arguments or i'm addressing something that i didn't like or he's telling me something important it's once my son goes to sleep and our doors are closed right yeah and you know sometimes he still kind of hears it and he's like hey are you okay mom and i'm like yeah, your dad just pissed me off last night <laughs> and he's like okay but he already knows he's kind of like oh whatever they'll work it out you know um so f- finding that stability for your son and showing him you know how to treat a woman your your husband's teaching him that but also how the women should treat him yeah yeah and that's that's huge um i know that men are more vulnerable they're more sensitive than we are yeah Yeah. and yeah they're wired differently a hundred percent um i watched this show you probably watch shows with your husband too but we were watching this one show the little johnstons on tlc i don't know if you've ever seen it Mm -hmm. yeah we love the way that they parent Mm. but this past week or i don't know if it's from like a past episode i don't know because i don't watch it every week um but the older daughter just moved in with her boyfriend i think it was like six months ago or something like that and so she's at the mom's house crying saying that it's Mm -hmm. not working out that he's not being romantic that he's not this that he's not that and you know and i told my husband i'm like she's probably not getting the loving like she used to because now they have responsibilities and my husband mm-hmm. kind of stayed quiet throughout the whole thing. And at the end, the mom tells her, well, it's better for you to know now and just move on than, you know, being married and having to go through a divorce. And so that's when I told my husband, I said, oh, that's messed up. Like, it's only six months. Like, mm-hmm. it's taking you, taking us how long? <laughs> and yeah. we're still getting to know each other. Like, that's so messed up because you can tell that the guy really, really loves her. And then my husband opened up, girl, and he left me with my mouth open because he goes, yeah, she's not understanding. Then now he has the responsibility of a house. Mm -hmm. She's a little person. Mm -hmm. They're talking about kids and marriage. Maybe he's not ready for all that because he's thinking about her well-being he can't just knock her up because what if there's something wrong in her pregnancy what if your child is born also a little person then you're gonna have to figure that out he goes we have so much stress but we Mm -hmm. don't tell you guys that 
Yeah. Girl, everything made sense. We got engaged, married, had a kid, like mm-hmm. in so little. No wonder we were struggling. Poor guy couldn't let out his feelings <laughs> and tell me, hey, I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a conversation I have with my husband too. And it's like I because I don't understand. You know, like I'm like I'm my mind is like laundry, doctor's appointments, work, food, like all these things. And he's like are you guys safe? Are you okay? Like, are we going to pay the bills? Are we going to do all these things? And I'm like, we'll be fine, whatever. Like, but I need you to pick up this laundry. Like, come on, <laughs> you know? And it's, it is, it is like, I do, like I said, I've just had to learn, like men are processed and wired and they think differently. Mm-hmm. And once I was able to like get outside of myself and really, like I said, be that open and safe space for my husband and say okay like I'm listening and allowing him to be vulnerable because they do have feelings and they are sometimes a little more sensitive than us they just show it up differently and you know like able to be like okay well now I get it and like now I'm like encouraging him like have you taken care of yourself today versus like expecting him to be like here's a hundred you know I did all this for you like now I'm like all right are you doing this for yourself are you you know are you do you need time like now and that goes back to like my postpartum stuff like once I was able to be in a space where I was like I could take care of myself and I could do these things now I'm able it's like a 360 like I'm able to like pour back into him and tell him when like he's struggling with parenting and I'm like hey maybe you need to like take a deep like maybe you need to go for a walk or maybe you need to do something to fill Call your boy. cup I tell my husband all the time I'm like if you need to go out for a boys night go for it yeah go yeah. go shoot some darts I don't know go drink beer whatever you want like just <laughs> go out it makes you happy yeah yes, because they need it too and that's yeah, the thing maybe. I think many women do not realize right yeah. and especially now I think it's becoming so toxic where it's like the man has to look a certain way he has to be a certain Mm -hmm. height he has to earn six eight figures he has to do this he has to do that and it's like girl well then what are you bringing to the table well i'm bringing myself well that's not enough it's not realistic either it's not because Mm -hmm. a man and now i look even at my parents my parents were very dysfunctional (laughs) i love you parents (laughs) but they were very dysfunctional but Again, my mom was 16 and my dad was 20 mm. when they got married. Within the mm. year, they had the baby. They had, you know, they immigrated to this country all by themselves, had no support whatsoever. Um, that, that takes a toll on you. And that unfortunately sometimes spills into your kids. And, you know, and when they tell me, you know, I feel guilty and I'm, I'm mad that this it didn't go out this way or you guys are not getting along or whatever. I'm like, it's not your fault. What yeah. did you guys know at that time? And I just had my dad on. I don't know if you speak Spanish or understand Spanish, but I just had my dad on. And it's a it's a full on um, Spanish episode with him. And he okay. talked about like what he struggled with in life and and all that. And I'm like, I want to capture that for my nieces, my nephews. And they have gra- great grandkids now because my nephew made them a great grandparents. But um, but I'm like, you know. It's something that is not really talked about, but I feel like men deserve their own space and we need to give them grace because God, girl, they hold down the fort so much because I bet you your husband most of the time he's just stressed out because he's worried about you. He's worried about the baby because he's not just looking out for himself. He's looking out for you guys. So you guys come first. Yeah, shout out to my husband. Yes, He's amazing. husband. <laughs> and, I, and I do appreciate that. And I think that's something like my, you know, my mom and my dad, like they've always been, they've always been like strong pillars in my life, you know, and they have like, they got their own stuff going on too. <laughs> but, you know, like just to see like him and I are doing something different and new and like just appreciating that it is, it's unique and it is going to come with these struggles like you know it's it is what it is and but that's what um, makes your your marriage stronger girl yeah those struggles yeah (laughs) oh girl what i don't know either i i tell my husband (laughs) i know your mom's social security i'll hunt you down (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i'm just i just i love um I just love that he is like that and he's just protective and he cares for us so much. And, um, you know, like other people, my parents recognize it, my friends, my family. And so it's like, 
I just love that he is is who he is and mm-hmm. unapologetic for that. And I just have to learn how to appreciate it a little bit more. <laughs> we all have to work on that girl. We all have. But you know what? When payday comes, buy him his favorite snacks. You know, make yeah. sure to always have that on deck. Always make him his, you know, at least once a week if you can make him his favorite meal. Yeah. Um, you know, that's how we pamper them. Or at least that's how I pamper my husband. I'm like, you know, pack him his little lunch with his little vitamins. And, you know, I know what <laughs> chips he likes. And I switch yeah. it up with some fruit, his favorite fruit or whatever, you know. But that's what it is, being supportive and having a household. And, you know, I think you're doing an amazing thing. Oh, my God, girl, I want to listen to your podcast so bad. Oh, thank you. Yes. Because I I could just imagine all the things that you have to share with us. Yeah. And I I have to get out of my own head, too, and just do it. And like, you know, it's 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 not like for me, like if I if you were talking to me like 10 years ago, like, yeah, I want to be famous. I want to do all this stuff like I want all the attention on me. And I'm like, I just want to encourage people to be who they're supposed to be and like if someone could get influenced by my struggles and my journey and knowing that like you said my story is not over like my life is just beginning and I want to be able to like share that more and share the different stages and know that and I want other people to know that it's okay like it's okay for you to be at this point in your life it's okay for you not to be at this point in your life or whatever the case may be like you are uniquely yourself and I'm even as I'm learning it like I'm uniquely myself Mm -hmm. and I'm appreciating that and it's like I just want others to feel the same way and because I feel like we're all born with different gifts and talents and we just unfortunately live in a world where we're not operating in those fully no. you know we're, we're working we're doing all this stuff people are on only fans and selling pictures of fee and doing all this stuff to make money and i'm like well i'm gonna go to work now <laughs> oh you know like i'm gonna go to the grocery store like you know just like this is you know in the mundane things i'm like i've had to appreciate that I'm my journey in life has made me where I'm at today and I'm really excited for the future that is to come because at this point I've just let go of control and I'm just like all right God I'm I really want to listen to you I really want to be obedient to what you have called me to and mm-hmm. this is part of it for some reason God's like this you got to do this and I'm like okay I don't know what that means but <laughs> I'm just going to do it but I feel like it's very essential in a marriage to put God as your third person Mm -hmm. in your marriage because that will put you right back into your feet into the ground girl and he will center you yep and he will tell you no 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 bam sit down this is how it is (laughs) be quiet yes be quiet that's not gonna lie i get be quiet and i'm like okay yes girl (laughs) i i mean i know that till this day he's trying to teach me patience I'm I'm oh, convinced yeah. that he's like woman. You need to be patient, um, you know. But I think you're doing a wonderful thing. Yes, get out of your head, girl. You have a supporter over here. This is your platform yeah. for whenever you want to come on. Please be my guest. If you ever yeah. need somebody, I'll be your guest. Um, yes. It, so thank you so much for sharing so much information about you girl and just you know being keeping it real today thank you so much for that i really appreciate you thank you i really appreciate it and i would love to work with you again so whatever you need me to just hit me up girl i'm gonna call you every week (laughs) (laughs) um but yes you guys go check her out if you guys are watching on spotify or youtube you can see on the screen um her handles and Mm -hmm. if you're just listening to us on whatever platform go to the description box of this episode and you'll find um the links so you can connect with alexis and go and follow cruises corner i cannot wait to listen to it so thank Thank you so much you guys for tuning in we'll see you next week bye I want to hear your story or I want to support your small business. To do so, please go ahead and visit embracingmymarkings.com. Thank you for tuning in.